Hello and welcome to another Popper video. I'm Kelly Kaiser and today we're playing Turbo Initiative. This is a deck that comes to us from Simarisu, who is a Japanese player, my understanding. And this list also, basically the same list, was played in Popper Geddon from Il Frito. And they managed to make an 8-4 record. That's really, really good in a 700 tournament for sure. We also have been seeing a lot of trophies from uh, Simarisu in the league, so I think that this is now is the time to just try once again to slam people with Avenging Hunter on turn two. So it's going to be pretty sweet. We just want to use our fast mana to put our emblems onto the table. With the way this deck works is you have four of the depletion lands with Hickory Woodlot and Sand. The rest of the mana base is Mountain for one forest because the initiative searches. Then you also have Oliphant and Generous Ent as land cyclers. You have 16 fast mana with Lotus Petal, Rite of Flame, Spirit Guide, and Main Speaker Goblin. So all our fast mana is red, which is why our mana base is mostly red. In order to cast the Avenging Hunter, we have Burning Tree Emissary to filter the red mana into four Avenging Hunter and three Trailblazers Torn. So that's seven initiatives. We have four Crimson Fleet Commodore for the Monarch, but that gives us 11 emblem creatures to slam. Then making space for four of lightning bolt and four of a braid. Braid is the choice just to be able to handle it, but also being another three damage to a creature, so you've got most creatures in format. Then you can slam in with Goblin Bushwhacker, so it gives you a little bit of the uh turbo uh turbo attack kind of style deck where you goblin burning to reach avenging bushwhacker get in uh win with the game fast. Sideboard, we've got Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast, so eight, seven blast effects, one Gorilla Shaman to bring in as an additional uh, die artifact up for deck. Breath Weapon can also clear the table versus like two and one one. Then Flaring Pain Fog effects, three of because strands and fogs are good at stopping us. We want three because we need to be able to find it fast, so I think that makes sense. Obviously, I didn't build this deck. This deck was built to us, built by Simmery. So I'm copying that. But it is pretty solid. So our Avenging Hunter is the main card that we're using in the deck. Um, on Magic Online, it's gotten a little bit pricey, but this is not too bad on the card market. Terms of Fleet Commodore, also the other major beater that we're using. Find that as well. This video is brought to us by cardmarket.com. Really appreciate that. And it is the largest color of Magic the Gathering cards in Europe. So if you're trying to fill, fill out your battle box, check those that those people out at that website, which is in the description. If you want to support me and get some sideboard guys, check out Patreon, which is patreon.com slash guys. Make sure to like and subscribe on this video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. If there was a moment that you thought was really sweet. Make sure to timestamp it and uh, hit me up with a comment as well. Check out Pondering Popper for lots more audio popper content and matches. Okay, it's round one and we have the nuts, so we're gonna keep one, two, three, four, five mana, plus sticker goblin, plus burning tree emissary. Okay, let's see if they have spell fears back. We might still be able to get there through a spell fears. We have trailblazers for go land and right of flame. Okay, right of flame again. Okay. Sticker goblin for opponent. Right? They have no response because Island can't deal with this in turn one. Make five mana exactly so he can bring three emissary, turn that into green mana, and slam the Avenging Hunter. Did the thing immediately. Open the nuts. Okay. So we have nine power on the table. We take the initiative. We grab our forest. So turn next turn we have three mana. And uh, a lot of power in the on the table. We have literally no idea what they're doing other than Island Go. So this could be any of the control decks that are playing Lorien. could also be a terror deck. I think either way, they're pretty dead. I think if I were them, I would not have cast a spell and I would have considered But we know they're on blue, so we can just swap out all of our removal spells for Pyroblasts. That was pretty big. Okay, what do you got? Oops it up. <laughs> Should not have brainstormed, to be honest. But I think our sideboarding is not going to change. Bring in all the Pyroblasts. We cut all the other removal spells. There's one more removal spell we could bring. I guess it's just lightning bolt. We could also just cut the Alan Bushwhackers for lightning bolts. Fire blast. 
but we don't know if lightning bolt is going to be better than bushwhacker necessarily i'm going to keep it like this and then if we want to i think this makes sense like if you look at the mapping Kimarisu is probably cutting bushwhacker and abrades for pyroblast but i don't know if lightning bolt is used a lot of times these kinds of decks are playing something like i'm gonna i'm just gonna submit it this way and we'll see if bushwhacker matters later so the, the main thing that we need to do is, and we did, open up a red blast. We don't have any initiative creatures. They're keeping seven. We have some land drops, so I'm going to keep them. We can protect the names to goblin, and we can cast and protect them. All right. Not protected from a the woodlot. Find an Oliphant. We have one, two, three, four, five mana. Maybe. We get lucky on the names to goblin. They're representing red flute. Hydroblast or like that. I think here we have four mana. So it depends. If they have they have a lightning bolt here, then I can't use the six goblin. If they don't have a lightning bolt, I can play or looking on, on hydroblast, I can play hydroblast. Sticker goblin, burning tree, trailers or storm. So I think I'm going to play the lotus petal. Go for goblins. Happen. They have a removal spell. Okay. Then next turn we have Burning Tree into Trailblazer Torch. We could also cycle the Lotus Petal right now for a land. Play a Ponder. We can cycle for a land off the Oliphant. Unlikely that they have another like double Hydroblast here. Maybe it makes sense just to stand the Trailblazer's Torch. Burning Tree on the Ferry. Do some not shuffle. Kind of mountain anyway. Let's. Torch. Four, five, six, and eight. Blazer's Torch. I have to counterspell. They don't counterspell. Okay. I'm going to ride this for a little bit. Next turn, I can play the Burning Tree and grab a mountain. Best case scenario for me would be that they tap out for a Murmuring Mist or a Magic Fleet Admiral or something. Turn three initiative and nothing to back it up. Probably need to go into Lost Well into Stash Catacombs. Table. Brainstorm. Still red elemental blasts, but no creature. Still maintain a laser Lost well for another fire blast. Avenging hunt. Can't. All right, let's uh bottom the needle. Copy avenging hunter. Avenging hunter. They cannot hydro blast it. Bam. I four. Get this dash now. Then we get to make a creature off catacomb. Or I could go into Arena and Archive, but probably better just have more creatures, more five mana. We have the Mercury Mystic. Okay. Or one. Find another Avenging Hunter. Cycle this for a land. Torch on the Avenging Hunter. I would have a Scred here. That'd be pretty bad for me. Five. I'm not going to give them something to count. They're sitting on Hydro Blasts. And I'm 100% blocking. Not 100% blocking. Breath weapon. In the bolt here, I probably need weapon kills their creature. Oh. Cards in hand. Oh <laughs> yes, breath weapon. It didn't damage it because it's a dragon. That's so good. Oh man. <laughs> He's like bug? Nope, it's a dragon. <laughs> that sucks. Oh okay. My audio is all crazy. Let's see if I am not um not proud of myself for that. Let's see. <laughs> Plays with Telerian Terror. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> they take the initiative. Let's just uh pause here for a second. My mic was way too far away from my face, which is annoying, but that's all right. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is attack with the Avenging Hunter. Because it's gonna get through no matter what. Swing in. Then we're looking for some mana. Deal two damage to your Chalarian Terror. So Terror dies, you take two damage. We are now taking the initiative. All right, hopefully we get something good. Name Sticker Goblin. Okay, Burning Tree Emissary is what we need. That gives us mana. So we have Burning Tree, we do a Burning Tree. Oh no, not the mana that we needed. Darn, because it's on the damage step. All right, I'm gonna play some more Burning Tree Emissaries then. And then I'm going to just put the torch on my biggest one. Okay, they play a land. They get in for one. They take back the initiative so they can forge their creature. 
So I forgot that was on the damage step. Although, it's probably better just to have a 5-5 five five than it was to have the other creature. Plays a Talarian Terror. Okay, let's attempt to Pyroblast the Murmuring Mystic. Nice. Swing out. They block. Okay. We take the initiative back. We get a creature. Or no, we get a mountain. Or forest. Take the forest. Play the forest. That's the turn. Next turn we can cast the Avenging Hunter. Our opponent's going to trap us after attacking. I'll likely just attack with the bird. I was so overwhelmed by the breath weapon that I did not know what I was doing. <laughs> Gets in for one. Okay, we're going to go to 17 and then to 12. Plays a land. One card in hand. Um, Let's attempt to cast this Trailblazer's Torch. No, that does not what I want to do. I want to get in right now, take the initiative, and then cast the initiative, because that will kill them. If I, if I take the initiative first, then I won't go into Forge and into Trap this turn. I'll just go into Forge, which won't win the game. I mean, if they have a Lightning Bolt here, then I have to just cast the Avenging Hunter, but it looks like they don't have Bolt. The creature dies. We Forge our other creature. They could have a... Um, counterspell, and in that case, I want to try to just play the torch here so I have another thing to cast next turn. Spell Pierce. That sucks. All right, pass the turn. So I was playing around counterspell and played into spell Pierce. I guess if I played the Avenging Hunter, they would have to have exactly counterspell. So we know we're going to know all the cards in their hand. They reveal Scred, so they're dead. Sweet. They, well, they go into archive and draw a card. All right. It's a close one. Did they draw a counterspell? I should have slammed the Avenging Hunter, apparently, because that would have won the game over through a spell pierce. We have Avenging Hunter and a Pyro, but we don't have backup. Can we do it? Did they draw the counterspell? They did not, and we win the game. <laughs> GG. Sweet. Crap you. Uh, that was fun. It was exceptionally fun to get Breath Weapon there. All right, we'll see you in round two. We're in round two on the draw. We have no lands, so not as good of an opener as last time. We have double torch and sticker goblin with right of flame. So I can turn to a torch. I guess I'm keeping this. I'm going to be able to turn to the sticker goblin regardless because I've right of flame into goblin, so I think I'll put back the mountain. Although we can get the forest if we land the torch, so let's put back the woodlot. Plays an ice tunnel. If I can find a second Rite of Flame, I can make enough mana. Two, three. I have enough mana for a turn one here. Rite of Flame, Simon Spirit Guide, Name Sticker Goblin, Grab Laser's Torch. All right, grab the forest. Feels good, man. Turn one the initiative jet <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Play an Augur of Bolas. Uh, there's maybe something to be said for going to scrying, looking to, for a way to kill that. Let's Lost Will. Don't have a way to kill it. Needle can go on the bottom. Bottom both of these. Commodore. Pass the turn. Not good. They're pondering looking for a removal spell. Probably should have just put the torch on the sticker goblin there. That was a mistake. Chooses to not shuffle. Goes Maestro's Theater. That's the shuffle for them off their ponder. So they got one card from it that they wanted. Uh, Grixis. Okay. Now, if we play the Monarch, we'll have... Let's go Stash. I forgot I was going to Stash because I could have played another initiative there. Let's play the Commodore here. And yield until the next end step. And then if we draw into a removal spell, we can try to go after the Augur of Volus. Draw a Mountain. Okay, your turn. We're sitting back behind all of our emblems. Hoping they don't have double removal spell. They had it. Okay. They get in. They take all of the emblems. Problems. Problems have arisen. But we're going to go Trailblazer's Torch, make a creature. I can find... I find a removal spell. And we'll have a little bit of, of wiggle room here. They get rid of the Rite of Flame. Maybe I should not have gone for the Scry. All right. So we can play the Burning Tree. Make some mana. And then play a Torch. So we have the initiative. They make a skeleton creature token and pass the turn. They need two removal spells. Or one sweeper again. Okay. 
That kills my skeleton. Choose a creature. Guess this one? I mean, they had it the whole time. All right, I will scoop it up. They won. So I definitely just still want to be on the pyro plan. And they have small creatures, so I'm going to cut the bushwhacker and the abrades for the pyros. Now we're on the play. We're looking for turn one initiative. We have one, two, three mana. I'm going to keep this. So this is a turn two Commodore. Pass the turn. Hopefully they have a tap lane on turn one. If they don't, we can try to rush a generous ent into play, maybe. Okay, they play a tap land. We find a lightning bolt. Let's play a Commodore. Now we're just going to rely on lightning bolt and our pyroblast. Wait, I have six there for a second. Now I'm trying to un F six. There we go. Lotus petal. That allows me to maybe draw into a pyroblast effect. Pass the turn. Draw a mountain. So we can cast a Venging Hunter with five mana next turn. If they play a 1-3 Augur Bolas, I can just bolt it on my turn. They go land, pass. Probably kill the, Aven the Commodore. That's, I think, fine. We're still getting two cards a turn when they're getting one. Land, pass the turn. Next turn, we can cast a Generous Ent. Find a Sticker Goblin. That's quite good. If they tap out, we can go a Sticker Goblin into Generous Ent. They have three mana. Plays an Augur of Bolas. Okay, I'm going to bolt it, which they might Hydroblast, and then I can bolt again, and then go on my turn, name sticker Goblin Generous Ent. And the Ent is a pretty big creature for sure. They reveal a Breath Weapon. You have to remember that that does not hit the Avenging Hunter. Bonk. You a Hydroblast? No Hydroblast, okay. We have a Pyroblast. Well, I think I'm going to burn... Hmm. Let's try playing the Sticker Goblin and see if they have a Pyroblast or a Hydroblast. They just have a removal spell. It is what it is. They're not going to play a removal spell. Okay, I'll play my Generous End now. We have Lightning Bolt plus Pyroblast to continue holding the Monarch. Draw a card. Another Pyroblast. Double Pyro. So they're not going to resolve a blue spell if I can help it. But they have Thorn of the Black Rose as their own Monarch creature, which we cannot counter. Play Ponder. Okay. I'd rather not burn the sandstone needle if I don't have to. They don't shuffle. Plays a land. They're going to breath weapon on my turn, it looks like. We find a Commodore. Let's attack. Don't know if we need to play another Commodore right now. They breath weapon. They're going to take five. Sure. Since they have the um, thorn that they could just slam and take the, the Monarch, then I can go like Bolter Thorn, untap Commodore. Plays the Thorn of the Black Rose. Okay. Lightning Bolt. They draw one card. We have a 5-7 still. They could have Snuff Out. They don't have the Snuff Out. Then my Needle. Going to attack. They have a Snuff Out. Then we will go Burning Tree, Crimson Fleet Commodore. Okay. We are the Monarch now. I think I still just hang out. I mean, if I play the Crimson Fleet Commodore right now, then I have Lethal. All right, it's probably worth it. Play the Burning Tree, the Commodore, and pass. So we're protected from blue spells, but okay, Torch is good. I'm gonna say we didn't have other stuff to do. Like if they have the Edict effect again, or some way to block this, then we can only deal them six, seven damage. They cycle the Lorien Revealed. They find an island, they play the island. They're passing the turn. What is their play? My play is to attack for lethal. Boom. Breath weapon. Okay. So they're going to take five. You play Trailblazer's Torch. Spell Pierce. So I'm going to Pyroblast the Spell Pierce. And then grab a Mountain. So I still have Pyroblast in play. And they're dead in two turns. Because we're going to go into Forge. And then, well, actually, next turn we can just play Trailblazer's Torch to hit them for five. Get the Mountain. Play the Mountain. Your turn. So we have them double dead. We also have Lightning Bolt. I love it. It's drawing tons of cards. Okay, what do you got? Thorn of the Black Rose. Okay. So we have them dead like 16 ways. Plays a land. They only have one mana open. Uh-huh. They draw a card. Draw the card. We are going to Lightning Bolt and then attack for five. I guess it's attack for seven. Forge this. Uh, Lightning Bolt. They counter. 
I'll counter back. And that's the game. Let's see if we can win the post board on the draw. I think our sideboard plan is exactly the way that Simurisu wrote it up. So let's do it. Got to open up a good hand. Okay, what are we looking at here? One, two. I think we have a turn two that we can do. Let's keep this. A couple of different ways. We can cycle for a red, right of flame. Right, because right now we have exactly two mana off Simeon Spirit Guide, right of flame. Their early creatures are mostly just the Augur of Bolas. Untapped land would win. Double right of flame also is good. So, Simeon Spirit Guide, right of flame, right of flame, name sticker goblin, five mana. We're going to torch, grabbing the mountain. Turn one initiative, baby. Just like we drew it up. Grab the mountain, attach the torch, play the hickory woodlot. So the, I'm in, we could play the mountain and attempt a pyroblast because it's going to get out of bolt range next turn. So let's do that. Like if they have a hydroblast and we pyroblast right now, then we can start slamming in and maybe dead them before they have anything that they can accomplish. Play Augur of Bullis. So let's just counter. No two for one for you. I get a four, four and attack. Feels good. We're going to forge. Play the woodlot. I have a, another red blast. It's just ridiculous. Bonk. Next turn, you're going to go to 12 and then 8. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, brutal. Okay, do you have the Hydro? No. Four cards in hand for our opponent. We have Olafont in hand, which is basically just representing um, a mountain here. Trap you. Play Sandstone Needle and attack. They go to 8. They cycle Lorien Revealed. They could get a... Ma uh, a swamp land and then snuff out. They get an ice tunnel, so they might have snuff out this turn. If we draw a card and we have enough mana, we could maybe cast the Oliphant. I mean, we're gonna probably get the thrown off regardless. Okay. Uh, gonna attack. They're taking it. Is there anything I want to do? I haven't played a land this turn, right? Nope. So let's just get a land out of the deck. Play that, and then put them dead. To a great many things. Is their answer to just play out the thorn and block? Oh, I guess we win. GG's. Bonus gives us the GG's. We'll see you in round three. We're here in round three versus cars. They like to play blue decks. So we have a good sideboard plan. Um, three, four. We could maybe Olaf on Bushwhacker. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this. I think this is probably one of the weaker hands that we've seen. But we can keep. Seems unlikely. We'd have to get a really lucky on this name sticker goblin. They goblin tomb raider. All right, that's a little bit better, right? We hit a five. We can play the oliphant. Four. Let's see what happens. Goblin. Darn. Bolt. Bushwhacker. We'll attack you for five. So now we have four five mana. Cold of the burn is traditionally a very bad matchup for um. The turbo initiative type strategies. All right, this is a pretty decent thing to have here because we can Crimson Fleet Commodore and then hang out, hopefully protect it. They have a bolt. I'm not going to attack. I draw a land. They have to have two more removal spells or crack this synth. They find Seal of Fire. So they do. Okay, they called out the rebirth looking for a land. What did they get? They find a land. Man, Bert, brutal. Okay, concede. So we need to get rid of the bushwhacker probably and go full on removal spell mode. Getting rid of one other thing. We need creatures on the table. So maybe take out a torch. This is a turn three emissary into Generscent. Generscent's pretty big. Let's keep. From my understanding, this is the worst matchup for the deck. And I was able to play Cold Oath of Red, my own Cold Oath of Red type version, and I would beat this deck as well. There you go, land, Seal of Fire. So Seal of Fire is good against the Name Sticker Goblin. Play Sandstone Needle, I'll pass the turn. We could have just played out the Crimson Fleet Commodore there. Play Goblin Blast Runner. And a, mount, and a Great Furnace. Play Land, play Lotus Petal. Play Burning Tree. 
So it's going to give me the mana back. And I will cast a Generous End. Making a big ol' 5-7. They play a land. So in order to take out my um, Generous Scent, they'd have to, like... They can seal a fire the Burning Tree Emissary right now, which is a, definitely a problem for me. I'm going to not attack. All right, I'll play the Sandstone Needle, and I'm going to swing with the Generous Scent. I should have swung with both. That was kind of dumb. They go to 15. There wasn't really a reason to not attack with the Burning Tree Emissary. They play Bushwhacker. Okay, they're going to attack for a bunch. Kills my Burning Tree. They attack for 6. I'm going to put them to 10. I also have this food token. I'll attack you. Put you to 10. So, hmm. I can Torch plus Commodore, or I can double Commodore right now. Or I can just food token. I think I'm just going to food. They bolt me. All right. Check the food. We're at 14. Bushwhacker again. Annoying. Do you have another Bushwhacker? It's in for six. All right, we're just gonna... Commodore. Come the Monarch. Commodore again. Come the Monarch again. <laughs> Your turn. We draw a Burning Tree Emissary. So next turn we can Burning Tree into double... They have double end the festivities. Pretty stinky. Tax takes back the monarchy. We're gonna go to five. I'm really surprised to see the double end the festivities there. Plays a land. Okay. Cast breath weapon. And attack. We take the we draw from the monarch. Now they're on defense if they don't have an attacker. They find a mountain. A galvanic and bolt. Alright, GG. So on to round four. Round four, we're on the draw. We are two and one, and I think this hand is a mulligan because it just doesn't do anything powerful early enough. Now we have Burning Tree into Bushwhacker. That's also kind of mediocre. I guess I'll keep it. Put back and a braid. I mean, we have four. We have three mana right away. So if we find like Name Sticker Goblin, we can attack for eight on turn one. Sometimes this happens though. Okay, our opponent's on Cog Gate. Uh, note they're on White Red Gates. That's gonna be a lot harder for me. Play a land. Don't know if I want to just waste all of my mana this turn, because that would like really kind of set me back a lot. Uh, okay, they're on not Cog Gates. There's a Lembus. So some sort of Boros synth, or like maybe it's the Mardu synth deck. Play this Woodlot. I'll pass the turn. So this next turn we have Burning Tree Emissary into Bushwhacker. We have double bolts to clear the board. Raven Inspector for the opponent. Plays a Citadel Gate, so it is Mardu Synth Gates. Let's get rid of that creature. Name Sticker Goblin. Play this Burning Tree. They could have a removal spell here. Play Name Sticker Goblin. No removal spell, so I can bush I can Bushwhacker. And attack fours eight. Yeah. Now if they Tithing Blade, we can just kill the Bushwhacker. That's not that big of a deal. But I'm hoping to find an initiative creature off the top so that I can Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal into the initiative and then get a mountain and then hold up the removal spell. Play Tithing Blade. We get rid of the Bushwhacker. Play Limbus. Okay, so they have a lot of life that they can gain. They go top on the Limbus. They have a Simeon Spirit Guide. So it's just another attacker at this point. Maybe it's worth it. We're hard casting Simeon Spirit Guides. Let's pass the turn. They're at eight. If we can connect, they might be dead. The Tithing Blade again. Get rid of a 2-2. Two -two. Plays a Novice Inspector. Hmm. Bushwhacker off the top, maybe? I'm gonna Braid. So let's Braid, uh, kill this, and play Lotus Petal. Then we're gonna attack for four again. Bolt my creature. Yeah, we're probably not winning. They have nothing going on, but they have multiple clues. They can correct the limbuses. I'm just going to concede. Go the next game. Don't know if there's anything in the sideboard that matters here. So I'm just going to look to see if they have um, any... Well, they, they might have something like strands. So I might want flaring pain. Let's look. I'm not seeing any strands. So I'm just going to submit... I think the thing that we need to do is mulligan to a turn one initiative. 
we're on the play. We have Name Sticker, Avenging Hunter, Simeon Spirit Guide. We can turn to the initiative. Let's keep. We also have Lightning Bolt to clear the table. So as long as they don't have an open bolt on their turn one, and they are a Gates deck, we probably should be able to get them. Woodlot, pass. You have to keep passing when you have Simeon Spirit Guide because it's an option, so you can't just F8. What are you going to do? Play a tap land. They played a tap land. It's on. Land. Simeon, or we play Name Sticker Goblin, which gives us at least four mana. We play Avenging Hunter. And that gives us another mana to get, well, not mana right now, but we're going to grab, I guess it'll be the forest. Next turn, we can play the Trailblazer's Torch. We just probably want to spread out our damage here. So put the Forge counters on the Name Sticker Goblin because they have the Tithing Blades and whatnot. Liftgate and Great Furnace. So they can't Tithing Blade me this turn. Uh, Well, they're representing Bolts. So... I guess we'll see what happens. Put that there. They can double bolt this, like with these with this mana. So I didn't want to put the forge counter on the Avenging Hunter because it would be enough to do a lot of damage. Let's swing in for nine. They're gonna double bolt the Avenging Hunter anyway. Okay, good. I'm glad that I didn't put the counters on the Avenging Hunter. So they take four going to 16. Next turn we have Oliphant as another way to get. Um, red source, the Trailblazer's Torch, and Trap You. We're going to draw a card off Archives, cycle for our red land, and hold up Double Bolt. It won't be able to get in, and we will get the Throne on in the next turn. Force Guy Fisher is going to pick up a land, probably the Great Furnace, but they can't bolt my Name Sticker Goblin regardless. Returns the Cliff Gate. They're going to choose black, so, oh no, they still choose white, so they don't have, they don't really have anything going on. We draw a card. Um, Red Flame. This could at, at most make six mana. So I think we just cycle. Oops. Still cycle this. Grabbing a mountain. We can play the mountain. We can ride a flame into the sticker goblin and then bolt the skyfisher and attach the torch. Attach the torch. Kill this. Swing out. You go to seven. Next turn, we get a creature. Hopefully. So we have six damage on the table, plus the lightning bolt in hand, which is enough to take him down. Play Journey to Nowhere to take out my 4-4. Four, four. All right, so we just want a big, big creature. I wonder if it's better to have the Avenging Hunter here. That'll give us another land. Probably Avenging Hunter's better. They just scooped the Avenging Hunter. Solid. Love it. Let's try to do that again. Fast initiative. We're on the draw. One. We have a turn to Commodore. They're mulliganing to six. Is that going to be good enough? We might be able to turn one the Commodore if we draw another fast mana, so I guess I'll keep it. I'm a little bit concerned about them having removal, having creatures to put on the table. They play Black Dragon Gate, so it's going to go on red. They can't cast a creature off of that. We draw the name sticker Goblin. Sick. Goblin. Commodore. Nice turn one. Draw a card. Lotus Petal. All right. Pretty sweet. Simply always have it. They can Tithing Blade us, and I will sacrifice the Name Sticker Goblin, but they play Olympus. So they're going to take seven damage this turn. Probably want to get Needle in play. I don't know. Doesn't Probably doesn't matter that much. I'll play the Needle. Take seven. We draw a Bushwhacker. Very good. We have five mana coming to the next turn. So we could um, go like Name Sticker Goblin Bushwhacker you, but I'm not sure what's going to happen here. They don't play a creature, so we are going to continue to hold the monarchy, play a woodlot, and swing for seven again. They've got to have a removal spell now. Okay, they're going to bolt the Commodore and take two and go to 11. Draw a mountain. We need a creature or a removal spell. Right now we have seven mana, so... We could potentially get there. Um, if we draw initiative creature, we can go initiative into Bushwhacker attack. They play Limbus. Currently they're at 11. They likely don't want to trade with the Name Sticker Goblin. Hmm. I guess we can just cast Simeon Spirit Guide and the Bushwhacker. So we're going to attack for 8. 
Any bolt kills them if we draw it off the top, off the monarchy. They can't really afford to block because they need to try to take back the monarchy. They are going to block. Yeah, that's quite good for me still. Because now we get to see if we draw into initiative. Draw Lotus Petal. Okay, they're at six. We've drawn a lot of non-things. We get rid of our 1-1. One, one. Holding on to the 2-2 two, two here. I guess the worst thing we could see from them is the Coarse Guy Fisher. Is it Thraven Inspector? I'm really looking for a removal spell. Simeon Spirit Guide's decent. Play that. Play Mountain. F6. I don't have six. Let's look for a removal spell. Didn't find it. Dang. So uh, we have two creatures. They have the gate. They can make their thing gigantic. Uh, then we can block, but they might have removal spell plus attack. They choose to gate their creature. I believe that I have to block. Plays at the Raven Inspector. All right. Generscent. That's pretty solid. Big, big dude. I'll play the Generscent. Right now, the Generous can get, and can block something that's only gated once. Draw a card. They kill my Spirit Guide. Find a Hickory Woodlot. Man, it's falling apart. We drew so many cards. We're at 40, 29, or 19 cards drawn. And we haven't found any removal or initiative. So if they have a removal spell here, we're just dead. And I'll block. They become the Monarch. Finds a three-minute inspector, plays it. Another inspector. It's slipping away. We have an abrade. All right, I will attack. They're blocking. By the Hickory Woodlot, I'll pass the turn. They draw a card from the clue. We're super dead. Did not draw very well. That turn one uh, monarch j was so strong and just did not get us there. Okay. Citadel Gate. Crack a clue. No attacks for the opponent. Okay. Do we have double removal spell? No. Going to attack. Blocking. Spectre is dead. Play a forest. Play a burning tree. So we have the abrade to take out their creature if they try to gate it. We have two block we have two attackers now. They draw a card. If they I'm trying to hold the abrade just in case they have a core skyfisher because I don't want to get tithing bladed. They have so many cards in hand. All right, kill your Tithing Blade. They can pick up any number of things. Lembus is probably something good for them to pick up. Okay, picking up the Lembus, cast the Lembus. So we're looking for Lightning Bolt, I guess. We can bolt the Skyfisher, attack with everything. They have to block with the Novice Inspector and we take the Monarchy. Plays a land. Looks like they've got a Lightning Bolt. They're gonna double bolt the Generscent. So it's dead. Draw a card. All right, we lose. On to round five. Round five, we're on the play versus Carano. And we have a pretty medium hand, but we have Burning Tree, Burning Tree, Bushwhacker on turn three. Eh, I'll try it. Play the Needle. We have a Braid turn two. Land, pass the turn. Just a little sketchy. Like, this is maybe not the strongest, but I just don't want to mulligan to infinity. Carano. They go scary. So I think it might be better for me to just play Needle into Burning Tree, Burning Tree this turn. Even though I can't Bushwhacker, they appear to be on Poison Storm. So I want to just get damage on the table and then try to take out their artifacts with the Abrade. We should have a good matchup if I can get going quickly. They play a land. All right. We find an Abrade. I will attack. Should have maybe played the Bushwhacker. I was hoping I could find like another way to deal with them. Because if I find another creature, then I can pile on a ton of damage with the Bushwhacker. They let up they prologued on the end of my turn. So we are poisoned. I also felt like I wanted to hold up the abrade and not lose my lands. Looks like they're gonna cast a proliferation spell. Play Everflowing Chalice. Get the abrade. Let's blow that up. They do get their blue mana back though. The contentious plan, we're currently at three. So if I attack if I bushwhacker and attack right now, they take eight. Go to eight. Then the next turn they take five. They'll be dead to lightning bolt. So I think I have the bushwhacker. Send in the team. Take eight. They cast the Lorien Revealed. 
Okay, let's see if they have a land drop. Plays a peat bog. Find a mountain. Play woodlot. Send in five. We have one more turn. You have to kill us or weather the storm. Okay. Cast a deep analysis on themselves, so they're just dead. They could maybe go Pentad Prism into Weather the Storm, losing their scary. Prologue and lose. Alright, maybe they had Weather the Storm in hand and they were looking for, like, a forest. Commodore off the top. Alright, so we can just, like, do the same thing. We don't need the Lightning Bolts. But I do feel like a Braid can be useful. Alright, that's a pretty good swap. I like bringing in the Pyros here because that stuffs their big draw spells, and that's the thing that we need to stop them from having. So we have a turn 3 Commodore. We'll keep that. We have a fa any fast mana, we have a turn 2, 2 Burning Trees into Commodore. It'll go. So it looks like we're going to lead on Burning Tree, Burning Tree, Commodore, and then we'll have Oliphant to back it up as well. Find a Braid. Maybe it's like not worth it to just wait on the Commodore. Let's play other 2 Burning Trees. Just get men on or creatures on the table. Because what does this do for me if I don't? You know? I would have led into the, the Oliphant better. But if we're trying to pressure them right now, maybe it's better to just get on the table. Try to think that one through. I guess that also doesn't allow me to have an Avenging Hunter off the top right now. Serrated arrows for the opponent. They ping my creature. And Thirsting Roots. Okay. Gonna blow that up. We drew the Rite of Flame, so now we can Rite of Flame into Commodore. And we are going to start drawing cards. Send in the one. <laughs> Not a team, just the Maya Tutu. You're at 18. We draw Pyroblast, which is solid. We play an Experimental Augury, which gives them back some extra Depletion Counters on their Peat Bog and Woodlot. By passing the turn, we have another Commodore. Probably worth just playing that out. This is a big beater. Send. We go to 11. All right, now we're just looking to counter all their blue spells. And right now we have lethal. So they have to have a fog or weather the storm at the moment. You know, I'm a little bit surprised to see poison storm everywhere, but I'm kind of proud of it. They're thinking about how to tap their mana. Plays an augury. Looking for weather or fog. Saving up the forest here. Still not poisoned. They infectious inquiry, so now they're dead if they don't have a tap land, an untapped land. All right, they scoop it up. So, in Poppergeddon, this deck went eight and four, and we went three and two. I think that's still a sixty percent win rate, which is exactly the same win rate as it was in Poppergeddon. Let's see, I'll calculate it out. Wait, yep, sixty percent. So, what would I do? I feel like you just need more ways to have turn one initiative. I don't know that necessarily the Bushwhackers are like, they're really good, obviously. I don't know. Simarisu has been working on this deck quite a bit. I felt like the sideboard plan of seven coming in was really good because it was easy to get either the Bushwhackers or like the Tra Trailblazer's Torch or, you know, siding things in seemed pretty solid. Um, losing to Mono Red felt bad, but couldn't really do anything there. And then losing to Mardu, I feel like we just had bad openers. And once again, that's just all the deck is. Have good openers, win the game. I had fun. We got to turn one initiative people a couple of times. So hopefully you enjoyed. Hashtag still listening. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video.